Rangers defeat the Ottawa Senators 2-1 to one in Ottawa. And this was a game that, even though the Rangers haven't been playing their best hockey lately, and even though their last game they did lose, they got a point, you know, one could consider this a trap game. Um, you know, just a one-off trip to Ottawa, which I think that helps. You know, knowing, doing, you know, a task that, you know, it's one game, they hadn't played since Thursday. They don't play again until next Thursday. So in that sense, it's not so much the trap game. But after this Ottawa game, there's a lot of key divisional games. Um, I think out of the last 32 games the Rangers play, 16 of them are against their division. And the next two are against Washington at home and then Pittsburgh. But what was a good sign was the fact that Igor Shesterkin was in net for the Rangers. I thought that Georgiev would play this one, but it does make sense. Again, the Rangers haven't played a whole lot lately. They don't play for a while after this. Um, so I feel like Shesterkin, uh, it, maybe I underestimated Gallant's thought process because I know that earlier in the year, he really tried to get Georgiev in there. Maybe it's more so back-to-backs. Like I think the next time we might see Georgiev would be home against Vancouver a week from now where you get Shesterkin versus the Caps and the Pens and then – you go with Georgiev against Vancouver. But the point here is, is that Georgiev's not going to see a lot of time. And I wonder if there's a chance that maybe he could be dealt by the March 21st trade deadline. I don't think there's going to be a crazy amount of interest in him. Uh, it's more so, you know, there's been talk that Georgiev, you know, would rather get more of an opportunity. And that's understandable. I mean, I don't think he's a star in this league personally, but there are teams that could use someone like him. So I wouldn't expect the return to be much. But then also the Rangers would then have to get a backup uh, who is, you know, somewhat serviceable, maybe more of a veteran. But Igor in this game was, again, just fantastic. In this game, Patrick Nemeth replaces Zach Jones. And, and that's a bit disappointing, but it's not that much of a surprise. I prefer Zach Jones over Patrick Nemeth, but Nemeth, he does serve a purpose. Is he – was that contract – is that contract not looking great? No, it's not. I mean, you know, three years at about $2.5 million per year. It's nothing like crazy exorbitant, but it's more than he should be being paid. And Zach Jones, I thought, looked good in limited time, even though he was with fellow rookie Braden Schneider, who just continues to look really, really good. Braden Schneider is only 20 years old, and it looks like he's been in this league for 10 years. Uh, another good game for Braden Schneider. Nemeth being in there makes sense, regardless of what they do at the deadline, which I'm more focused on the forwards. For me, you can never have enough uh, depth defensemen, absolutely. But Nemeth, at, uh, at worst, is going to be like your seventh defenseman. So working him back in there, it does make sense. And look, it's against an Ottawa team that doesn't have a whole lot of scoring as witnessed in this game. So fine with it. Nemeth did all right. Uh, I, I can't complain a whole lot. You know, he's not flashy. The, the less you talk about him, the less you, you notice him, kind of the better. Uh, and I think he played about 15 minutes and looked okay in his first action in a while. But the Rangers yet again, and it wasn't so much they got off to a slow start in this one, but they give up a very early goal. So that's been a theme lately. More so lately than previously. The Rangers have gotten into the slow starts, but lately they've actually been getting up goals. And five minutes in, it's Tim Stutzla that scores for the Senators. Now, he was the third overall pick in the Lafreniere draft. So Lafreniere, Quinton Byfield from the Kings, and then Stutzla uh, for the Senators. And that was a play where Philip Heedle turns it over uh, in the at the blue line uh, offensive. Uh, and... Dryden Hunt was in the mix there too. Keandre Miller, who it was an adventure for Keandre Miller. Keandre Miller kind of, I guess he pinched a little bit. I don't know what he was doing, but it led to a two-on-one. Shruba let Stutzla take the shot, and he beats Shesterk and clean. And it gives Ottawa an early one nothing lead. So again, the Ranger bottom six, it's not great. I'm very much looking forward to the Rangers acquiring some forwards at the deadline. So think about it this way. You're going to get Kako back at some point. And then not only that, I would expect another forward or two. So that's going to mean you're not going to see, you know, someone like Greg McKegg, who it's just insane how much he plays. And I guess today, actually, you know, in comparison to others, the only one that played less than McKegg was Julian Gauthier, who is someone that I don't think we're going to see in the lineup when it gets down to playoff time. I think Julian Gauthier is a healthy scratch. Uh, you know, someone that could slot in the lineup in a given circumstance. Uh, Greg McKegg, I hope. Greg McKay probably will be in the same situation, sadly, but those are two guys 
automatically that I think will not be if they're playing in the playoffs and there's you know and injuries aren't a thing, then that would have meant somehow that we didn't acquire as you know as many forwards as I thought we would. Um, and it won't be easy for Jordan to do. And I would not. I'm not talking about like J.C. Miller types. I'm just talking about more you know a third line guy. Uh, which there could be a cost for that as well. That might be more than we'd like, but it's got to be something better than what we're putting out there. So McKay, Gauthier, Dryden Hunt in this game was not great. I mean, he had some moments where his puck possession was decent, but Dryden Hunt, that, that's a fourth line player. We can go on and on. Ryan Reeves, a guy who fills a role, but really is someone who should be there on a matchup dependent basis. Like I said, for that bottom six, the only two that, you know, really should be in there on a night and night out basis is Philip Heedle and Kevin Rooney. And even those guys, like Philip Heedle, I didn't think he was really great today. Uh, he had that really nice game against the Bruins, and I don't, I don't think he's really uh, fed off that at all. But the Rangers respond well, and that's the key. Less than three minutes later, it's a goal for Ryan Strome. And Strome, last game with that empty net in the shootout that would have given the Rangers the win, shoots it wide. So it was good to see Strome respond after, you know, I, I think that's a good way to silence the critics right there. Uh, Strong gets his 10th goal of the season, Braden Schneider with an assist, and Panarin. And it's kind of a shame that I haven't brought up Artemi Panarin's name yet today because Artemi Panarin was the player of this game. Panarin was brilliant. Uh, and I feel like lately he's always noticeable and the skill is always there, but I haven't loved his game recently, uh, whether he recorded points or not. I just... A little bit too much passing, not enough shooting, uh, but we'll talk about where the shooting comes in. But Panarin really was a force in this game in so many ways. Uh, Artemi Panarin uh, was a huge reason why they won this game and gives strong credit for that goal. So that ties it up at one. So we go 1-1 one, one going into the second. And to this point, there have been no power plays. That's been the thing lately in Ranger games. They haven't been taking penalties, but they haven't been drawing them either. And we know that power play opportunities are huge for this team. Well, they get one. Panarin draws a hooking penalty after some good sustained pressure. That was a good – I mean, that line did a good job today, uh, the Strom line with Panarin and Goodrow. And what do you know? Because that power play is so lethal, they score. Uh, it would be Panarin, his 14th goal of the season, just an absolute great slap shot. That's the shame of him not shooting is that he, he's got a really good shot. And Panarin scores uh, assisted by Zabanajad, the former Ottawa senator, and Strom. So two points on the game for Panarin, two points on the game for Strom, a goal and an assist each. Gives the Rangers a two to one lead. And that was a really good second period where it's just that thing. The first period, they kind of did what they had to. It was sadly one of their better first periods, I guess, but it was kind of nondescript also. They got outshot eight seven. The second period was really good. They outshot Ottawa 15 to seven. The Rangers, they get better typically as the game moves along. And I guess if I had, I wish they'd play a full 60 minutes, but if I had my choice between the two, I'd rather them, you know, play better later. Uh, so they have a two only going into the third. And uh, really a poor shift, uh, specifically Keandre Miller. Uh, Keandre Miller with a really bad turn that he couldn't get it out of the zone and it leads to eventually Jacob Truba taking a tripping penalty. But the Rangers do kill it off. And uh, there were some tense moments in that power play for Ottawa. Uh, the Rangers within that power play had some struggles clearing the puck. Uh, but Shesterka makes some big saves and they're able to keep that true to one lead. Uh, and then what was really key was later in the period, Artemi Panarin draws his second penalty. Uh, it, it could have been a penalty shot, but I think penalty was the right call. And to be honest with you, uh, you know, to just to burn off those two minutes, nothing else, it's fine. You know, as far as whether it would be better to get the penalty shot at the power play, honestly, the power play might have been beneficial and they didn't score on it. Uh, but still, just to really chew off some clock. They did have some chances. They didn't score. Uh, again, Panarin was just a brilliant, I mean, a really good effort play to get to that puck and beat Nick Paul and force him to take that penalty. So after that penalty expires, there's about two minutes left. And the most interesting play of the game was with a little more than a minute to go, Igor Shosturkin, who's a great puck handler, gets the puck behind the net, fires it down. It looks like it's going to go in for, for the empty net goal for Igor, and it just goes wide. I don't know how that happened. It looked like it was going to go straight in. And at the very last moment, it kind of just went to the, to the left for an icing, which is risky in that sense because you're only up by one. Uh, and Shosturkin had to make some good saves in the last minute of the game. Uh, but that would have been so cool. You have to think that in his career, he's going to score a goal. 
He's just such a good puck handler. Um, I think if you had, to, I mean, it's tough, right? It's tough to predict that a goalie will score in his career. It's a very circumstance, it's very circumstantial. But I think that Igor could do it. Almost did. Would have been so cool. And honestly, probably would have been the story of the game. But well, didn't happen. But Shesterkin was unbelievable. The Rangers win it. He uh, makes 29 saves on 30 shots. And, you know, it was the Rangers played a pretty good game. Keep in mind, Ottawa did play the night before against Boston, where they did take Boston over time, but Boston did win. So that that is a factor. But Ottawa is not, you know, obviously they're not a good team by any means, but they are a team that is on the rise. They play, you know, like their defense is improving. Like they're not getting up as many goals as they have in years past. Uh, so the Rangers had to grind that out. I, I mean, two both wins at Ottawa this year, uh, the Rangers, they were not easy, but they win it. And I, I think this was a step in the right direction for the team. Uh, and now we await uh, what would have been the return from the Olympics. These last three games uh, were rescheduled games. Um, and so Rangers will host the Washington Capitals. This is the first game that they will play against the Capitals since opening night at Washington, where the Rangers you know, got beat up pretty badly. And it will also be the first game at home against the Capitals uh, since late last season, after the whole Tom Wilson incident. So that'll be interesting in terms of, uh, you know, the crowd reaction will be fun. It's a nationally televised game as well on ESPN. So that'll be cool too. The next game also is nationally televised at Pittsburgh on ABC Saturday afternoon. So you got some really like playoff field type games. And, you know, especially with Pittsburgh, that really feels like that could be a playoff preview. Um, but Washington's certainly right in that as well. That's going to be a playoff team. So these are going to be really good measuring sticks uh, and the Rangers have really, I mean, again, 32, 13, and 5. So we're 50 games through, 69 points, uh, which is the best that it's been uh, since 2012 when they had 71 points through 50 games. Like the Rangers, they, the 2015 President's Trophy team, this Ranger team has more points than that one did through 50. Uh, so, like, the record is just really the most impressive thing. You know, if you watch them, it, it doesn't really add up to that, but it's really just uh, remarkable. Draw Gallant, like just the mix is there. Uh, everything is just clicking in terms of the coach, uh, the players, where they're at in their career, where this team is at this point. It's all just meshing right now. And, you know, with about a month of the deadline, I'm very excited to see what Chris Jury might do. I mean, I guess I'm a little bit nervous after, you know, some of the moves that he's made I haven't quite agreed with. I mean, there's no doubt that that Pavel Buchnevich trade, it's just – I didn't like it then, and I, I certainly don't like it now. Um, but if he can do deals that, you know, are, I don't want him trading away key future assets, they don't really need that. They need just to kind of fill out the depth. They need, you know, some sort of middle six, you know, second line, third line guys uh, that, you know, can play a playoff brand of hockey. That could be key. But either way, Rangers win it 2-1 to one against Ottawa as they oh, – have a very, very key, important stretch coming up. And that starts with the Washington Capitals at Madison Square Garden on Thursday.